That was Rob. Hey Rob, this is Tyler Larson calling. I was the guy who sent yeah. you an email about the harp guitar. So you know how I like to kind of experiment with unique and interesting guitars? I'm doing that again. And no, this isn't a sponsored video. I paid my hard earned dollars for this guitar from Timberline Guitars. I will say I did a lot of research and this brand seemed to be highly regarded in the harp guitar industry. And I can't complain, it's a great instrument as you'll see. So without further ado, please like and subscribe. I'm just kidding, I don't ever say like and subscribe. I don't think people need to be told what to, I, I feel like it's obvious if you like the video then. Anyway, let's get into the video. I'm talking to the builder of Timberline Guitars, Rob, and he's telling me about this wood. Silkwood? Silkwood? Oh, man. Silk, S-I-L-K. These trees are just gigantic. I mean, honestly, the trunks of these things are like as big as my office, as big as my living room. They're just massive trees. I love talking to guitar builders because you guys go on and on and on about trees. <laughs> yeah. Paul Reed Smith is a friend of mine and, and he could talk to me about trees for like hours and hours. Listen. But so that piece of maple in the other room is extraordinary compared to this. Yeah, it sounded different. Maple makes wonderful sounding guitars, and I don't know why it doesn't ring that well in the raw form, but it rings great as an instrument. I appreciate the opportunity to work with you, Tyler. Of course. My pleasure, Rob. I'll be in touch with you, man. Okay. Sounds good. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, bye. I didn't tell him that I have no idea how to play a harp guitar, but... So I bet you're wondering, Tyler, why did you buy a harp guitar? You don't even play harp guitar. Well, I play guitar, and I appreciate harp as an instrument. So with those two facts, I can only imagine I am a ripe candidate for success. Tyler, why are you wearing a hood inside? That, my friends, is purely a fashion decision. Whoa! Now. Going through an airport, would you think that this is a harp guitar? I would think it's a keyboard. It looks like we have Grover tuners installed. Oh cool, this is about the saddle. Definitely not something you see normally coming with a guitar. Something talking about the tuners and the saddles. That must be an inflection point among harp guitars is the intonation. Which really should be for all guitars. But uh, let's do the big reveal, shall we? You guys got to see this here, come here. This feels different. Yeah, I am going to tune this thing up first. How do you actually, <laughs> what is the tuning for a harp guitar? Uh. <laughs> I almost went to fret the fifth string of the <laughs> uh, I don't know, can I do harmonics? That actually worked. I guess I was in the fifth and seventh fret area. All right, I'll tune the, uh, the standard acoustic first. That sounds awesome. So the harp part of the guitar, these are called sub bass strings. There are sometimes different numbers of them depending on what style of harp guitar, what model, who built it, when it was built. I don't even know how to play that thing. Got a higher him to tune it for you. Beautiful. I think this is a real tortoise shell. Real tortoise shell? I think so. This one is very, very standard, very easy to kind of transition from being a guitar player to a harp guitar player. As close as I'm gonna get at least. E G A B C D and then standard tuning. Just by tuning this thing, I can tell it's gonna take a little bit of practice to make sure that the correct strings are ringing out 
and to take care of resonance. Basically what I mean by that is I'm tuning something down here for example and there's something ringing like this. And I've run into this a little bit with uh, double neck guitars. Like you don't realize there's a couple strings making some string noise on one of the necks that you're not playing. So you kind of really gotta, I don't honestly know if it's, it's not a forearm, it's, it's like some sort of very precise uh, finger action along with potentially some adjustments to how you mute string noise. I'll work it out, but the first thing I wanna do is just plug this in and play some basic bass and chord patterns just to get a feel for this instrument. The cool thing about it is it has two inputs. It's got uh, an input for the sub bass strings and the traditional guitar strings. And honestly, um, it took me so long to tune this um, and get it perfect that I have to go eat dinner. All right, it's the next day I had to break for dinner last night because it took me like 20 minutes to tune this guitar up. I did kind of pluck around on this thing before I turned these cameras on this morning and there's a couple things that I've noticed right off the bat. The first is that the string noise I was talking about, that definitely is a factor between probably people who sound like novices on this and really great players of this instrument. For example, let's say I play a G, D, C. That's pretty clean right there, but I could play it like this. I don't know if you can really hear these strings kind of ringing out together. It's not quite that abrasive, but it is there. So being able to mute the sub bass strings while you're switching chords and making that harmony very apparent is definitely going to be the most challenging thing. I think that's gonna be even more difficult than memorizing where to hit each string, you know, memorizing these six notes. I picked those notes up pretty quick so I can pretty easily go through chord progressions. So I've memorized these notes, but again, it's going to be about not only the articulation and the string noise, but also the rhythm. There's a whole bunch of moving parts here. I'm going to basically take you through first findings, what I'm finding most difficult, and then I'm gonna practice this thing for maybe a few days. I wanna have something to present to you, so depending on how long that takes me will be another story that we'll find out at the end of this video. Hello? Hold, I told, I said, what a good job you did. In the All right, we're good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome, no problem. Talk to you guys soon. Yeah, that's just a, a normal occurrence these days. What is real? Anyway, uh, I wanted to basically just go through my attempt at learning this instrument on the spot. Honestly, I'm already in love with this instrument. It's such a beautiful looking instrument. It sounds amazing. Um, they did a great job at Timberline. Uh, this isn't sponsored, by the way, as you know. This is certainly a modern take on an old school vintage instrument that uh, I think a lot of you would probably enjoy. It seems intimidating, honestly, uh, but I think it's a little bit more simple than I'm making it out to be. It's just sort of things that I'm always used to on the guitar being able to do. I sort of have to relearn uh, but I'm excited about that. That's why I bought this guitar. I love showing you guys my first experience, like when I bought the fretless guitar, and then, speaking of the devil, Paul, when we did the half fretless guitar. Anything that's new and that can spawn fresh creative ideas and experiences, that's always what I'm gonna seek out. So, uh, let's see what I can put together on this thing. Day one, and then, if you wanna fast forward to the end of the video, that'll be day whatever, when I think I have a, at least a little bit of a grasp on it. There's certain styles to play where it's just your fingers and then there's maybe some advantages to using a thumb pick, which I've 
noticed a lot of people who were playing the harp guitar were using a thumb pick. So I am going to put on a thumb pick. I received this from one of you guys out there. Sorry, I don't know who it was. Sent to my P.O. box a while ago. But uh, I'm gonna see if this makes what I'm trying to play a little bit easier. <laughs> I'm gonna get this passage down. So here are the chords I'm trying to go between. Okay, so I'm basically finding that the distance, at least playing it like this, I don't know how common it is to play a chord like this. Uh, you know, most of the time I'm sure they do that. Uh, but, hey, I'm learning this instrument for the first time, I'm gonna learn it the way I want to. I'm not trying to be a classically trained harp guitarist. I'm gonna play it how exactly I want to, whether or not it is counterproductive because what's gonna come out, it will be my own. So anyway, what I'm finding is the separation. I'm finding myself going like and not making this adjustment here, which is difficult, you know? This little quarter inch change, uh, spreading your hand or contracting it, depending on what you're playing, that's like backwards to how my hand is used to moving. It's not used to making these extreme stretches and basically just gonna have to learn the roadmap of these different finger positions and uh, as far as the left hand goes, nothing has changed. So that's one good thing. I, I found myself kind of looking for frets here, but that quickly went away. Uh, so it's really about the picking hand coordination. See these two fingers. <laughs> are staying on the same two strings the entire time, but I'm finding that they come down to these two strings without me even realizing it when I adjust my thumb. So that just means I need to learn to keep this uh, retracted. And I can kind of feel, it's sort of giving me a hand workout. Just that tiny little incremental change. Uh, very interesting. <laughs> Not bad. Now, uh, let me practice. <laughs> 